Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. This is Carrier Jr. and uh, today I'm bringing you Cold Waters uh, which is uh, the second game that uh, I've added to the channel. Um, the first one being uh, Victory at Sea Pacific uh, which is also a naval warfare game uh, based in the Pacific Theater War in World War II. Uh, and that game is more of an RTS uh, slash uh, naval action game where you're controlling several fleets and several units in your production. Uh, more, of, more of a traditional RTS game. Um, and uh, we've done in that uh, series, uh, we played the US campaign and we're um, about a third of the way probably of the uh, Japanese campaign. But while people are catching up with uh, those videos, <coughs> I um, wanted to try this game uh, that's been out for about a year. It's uh, from Killerfish Games, so that's the studio that uh, brought it. Uh, so, um, so it's like a year, it's like a one-year-old game. So it's uh, it's been around, but um, uh, it's new to me and it's new to the channel, of course. And uh, Cold Waters is basically. Uh, kind of has certain similarities with Victory at Sea Pacific uh, but in contrast you're just controlling one ship so you do have a a, a top-down view like a, a map view where you can uh, issue orders uh, but then you can also take direct control of a submarine and uh, basically you're in command of a submarine and um, you are uh, fighting in uh, naval combat uh, the difference, the main difference is of course that uh, Cold Waters is set in the cold, well as it uh, might imply, in the Cold War or during the Cold War uh, and in fact uh, the campaigns are in, uh, there's two two campaigns, um, three campaigns in total uh, single player campaigns, I think one is in 1968, the other is 1984 and the, one, the other one, uh, the most recently added is the uh, uh, South China Sea campaign um, this player, uh, this game does not have multiplayer at the moment. So as you can see from the menu here, uh, it's got training, which is a uh, uh, just a bunch of training missions, uh, single pl single player missions or single missions, which is a list of uh, over a dozen single player missions. If you don't, don't want to do the actual campaign, the campaign, as I said, there's three campaigns, and uh, I believe you're all three of them are in uh, U.S. Um, you're part of the U.S. You're commanding U.S. submarines. Um, unit reference is like uh, basically a knowledge base for you know going th sifting through units uh, that are available in the game. Options is self-explanatory. So, <coughs> uh, if you can see here in the background um, from the video, uh, it it gives you an idea of what the game is like. This is these are actually in-game uh, shots. So right there is a Kiev uh, class. Uh, uh, what do they call it? Aircraft cruiser. Here we got the um, merchant ship. Uh, the water is beautifully modeled. Uh, the, the graphics are actually pretty, pretty good in, in this game, especially compared to Victory at Sea, where one of the things that I've complained about was, uh, you know, the, the really poor models. Um, I mean, if you want to like uh, talk about really good graphics, then uh, I mean, all you have to do is look at this game, right? Uh, the models are absolutely spectacular um, and as you can see in the background here uh, that's um, uh, the, the waters model great the models of the ships are great the only thing that I noticed was like explosions or you know and effects like that could be like a surface explosion could be improved underwater explosions are really really nice really well done the sound is great in the game and uh, the best part of that this game is that it does not require a crazy computer to run in fact, uh, I think it's only a couple of gigabytes of hard drive space and it doesn't require any crazy graphics cards or anything like that. So that's uh, always a plus these days where, you know, most games are just require crazy, very expensive computers. So what I'm going to do here, um, well, first of all, disclaimer as usual, um, I am not an expert in, uh, you know, in Cold War or modern uh, warfare units and weapon system. I have some knowledge. I'm not an expert though. And there's people out there who know a lot more than me. So um, th th my main disclaimer there is like I am here. I've done the tutorials. 
and that's about it <laughs> and um, I know I as I said I usually try to get a basic uh, understanding of the game mechanics and then the rest of it I try to learn as I go uh, with with you guys right and um, kind of um, explain things as I learn them and, and, and experience things as we go so that's kind of my style um, so all I'm gonna do in this uh, in this introduction video is uh, I'm gonna go through one of the I think seven I think there's seven tutorial missions and then um, and I'm gonna show you the basics of the game and then I'm gonna do probably one or two single-player missions uh, just to expand on you know show you what's uh, give you a very good idea of what the game uh, plays like um, so before we do that actually uh, the one thing I can do is go to this unit reference <coughs> page. So the unit reference, this is how it looks like. Um, you can right click and it will and scroll to zoom in. So this is a Seawolf class uh, nuclear attack submarine which is uh, uh, the most, ex I think it was one of the most expensive uh, submarines ever built. I think it was uh, three to three and a half billion dollars each. Only three of them were ever produced but uh, they are some of the most advanced submarines in the world uh, employed by the US Navy. Of course, uh, the U.S. Navy in these days uh, is building the Virginia class um, submarines, which are much cheaper, and uh, but uh, they have very good technologies and similar technologies, and uh, they're actually better in some ways. Uh, one example, and the Virginia class is not available in this game, unfortunately. That is very unfortunate. But as you can see here, there's four torpedo tubes on the le on the um, starboard side four torpedo tubes on the port side uh, but there is no vertical launch tubes uh, either uh, um, you know in the front of the ship or in the stern of the ship and there's nothing in the back here so um, so this is more of a classical attack sub submarine or, or uh, even several of the cruise missile subs uh, didn't have vertical launchers either but um, but as you can see from the model, uh, it is quite well done. Uh, you can see very detailed model, very good lighting, very good textures. Um, so that's the Sea Wolf. What else we got? Uh, here is a Flight 3 Los Angeles class, which is the latest and greatest. Uh, the Los Angeles class had three flights, uh, like the, the first generation and then Flight 2 and Flight 3. These are the best. He's got two torpedo tubes on uh, the port, uh, two on the starboard, and uh, the way you can tell a uh, Los Angeles class is that the, um, the the planes here are actually not on the on the on the mast, I think is that called, or the bridge, and uh, they're actually here on the hull. Um, and the, the other distinction is here you can see uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight in the center, anyways there's 12, 12 um, torpedo uh, tubes, or not tubes, but um, launchers, Vertical. this is like a vertical launch system and um, typically there's tomahawks in here for uh, cruise, cruise missile attacks uh, and that's the main difference between the flight uh, 2 also has them I think right here, this is flight 2, it's just uh, um, there's other improvements in the Flight 3 compared to it and here's the original Los Angeles which you can see does not have the VLS system and uh, you can still launch uh, cruise missiles and uh, tomahawks and um, harpoons from the side here uh, horizontally but it doesn't have the VLS system uh, just quickly here we can see there's the Norwal, Narwhal class there's a whole bunch of uh, um, US submarines that are older, the Permit class, the Sturgeon class, Skipjack, uh, what else we got? Uh, here we've got um, a guided missile cruiser, U US Navy, uh, same here, another one. And then we get the Russians. The Russians are uh, obviously the Typhoon class ballistic uh, sub nuclear submarine with all of its uh, launchers here. I think it had 20. 
and uh, various other ones. We got the Delta ballistic missile cruisers. Uh, the Yasin is actually the most modern um, Russian attack submarine that there. Are. And you can see it's got one, two, three, four, five torpedo uh, tubes on each side. Um, and I think, if I'm not mistaken, there's eight vertical launchers here. And each of these has, uh, I think, six to seven um, missiles in it. So, in it, in various missiles. Uh, most of them, whether they're uh, anti submarine missiles or cruise missiles or anti ship missiles or anything like that. So, this is a very, very powerful, very advanced submarine. Uh, the Oscar class, uh, one of the biggest submarines uh, as well. Uh, I think it's a cruise missile sub. Again, I don't think it has any launchers at the top of it. It just launches everything from the front horizontally. Um, various other older sh um, subs, the Akula class, which was one of the main attack subs. Uh, the Soviets had uh, before the Yasin. Uh, the Alpha class, which uh, is famous for its speed, I think it does over 43 knots. Very, very fast, and, and also I think it can do over 25. It says test depth 2,000 feet. I think it can do over 2,500 feet. One of the deepest diving and one of the fastest subs ever made. And then uh, besides all the subs, you got diesel subs. Um, <coughs> oh wait, and then here we got the, the ships, we got the Kiev class tactical aircraft carrying cruiser. Uh, again, look at these models guys. Like this is this is what a good model looks like in a game. Um, this aircraft, this, this is not a proper carrier because it didn't have catapults. So it just had helicopter and uh, short takeoff, and vertical takeoff uh, aircraft, but a lot of missiles. Uh, the Kirov is essentially, besides aircraft carriers and assault ships, it's the third largest class of ship in the world, and it's got a ton of missiles, uh, surface to air, surface to air missiles, uh, anti-ship missiles, cruise missiles, anti-submarine missiles. You name it, it's got it. Um, beast, beast of a ship. In fact, I think the Kirov was the size of a, like a World War II battleship. And then you've got the various uh, cruisers, anti-submarine cruisers. Um, the Udaloy, which is a very dangerous anti-submarine destroyer, very advanced. And various other smaller ships. And then at the end, you end up having uh, merchant ships. So there's not a huge variety of ships, but still pretty good. And the, as I said, look at this, look at these graphics. Great graphics, right guys? So, let's go back here and uh, jump into a tutorial and show you what the game is all about. So we're going to go and click on training. And then uh, here you can see there's seven tutorials. Number one is basic torpedoes where you fire dumb fire torpedoes that are not guided. Um, and it's quite f strange because this first um, tutorial, if you're not careful, there is a bear uh, anti-submarine uh, aircraft that will start shooting torpedoes at you. So. That's actually quite interesting. Uh, wire guided torpedo shows you how to do that, exactly that, to fire those. Uh, missiles, navigation, um, target motion analysis, which is a fancy way of saying, let's see what the target is doing, and the more we watch it, our computer is going to figure out uh, a firing solution for it. Sensors and mast, uh, they're on top of the ship, we're going to talk about that, and then tactics, uh, like how to repair your ship, basically. So I'm going to click right here on the guided uh, wire guided torpedoes, and uh, here we have the, I think it's a Sturgeon class uh, submarine that will, we will be under our command. So I'm going click to click accept. So it says USS Silver Sides SSN SSN six seven nine training exercise. We have a new sonar contact. 
our depth is going to start off at 45 feet which is periscope depth zero heading zero knots we're going to be sitting still and there's a strong thermal layer 150 feet and I'll explain kind of what that is in a second uh, so you can either close to 25,000 yards this, these are the standard approaches we're entering a battle in the game uh, which means you approach um, at a distance and then close your target or all man, man all battle stations which you gets you right into the battle on a very close range exostatus report is your loadout so you have uh, your your weapons so these numbers on the left are the ones that are in your stock like in your storage and the ones in the parentheses are the ones that are in your tube so it says four right now though because our tube our tubes have um, four uh, torpedoes right now, Mark 8 torpedoes. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna switch these for um, two of them we're gonna make uh, harpoons so now we're gonna see here that we have two harpoons in the tube and six in storage and uh, MOS is basically a, a decoy that you launch it's like a torpedo it just simulates the sound of a of a submarine, I think MOS stands for Mobile Submarine Simulator and uh, it just simulates the sounds and uh, you get three of those uh, TASM, is, TASM is Tomahawk Anti-Ship Missile and Tomahawk Land Attack Missile these are two variants for attacking ships and land and then you can load Special Ops uh, which essentially you can uh, help infiltrate uh, or deliver special ops, navy seals, or whatever uh, to target areas and back. That's one of the things that these subs do. And uh, so, yeah, we're gonna go with that. Um, let's reduce the number. Here, you can click on here. We can reduce the number of UGMs. Actually, we're gonna reduce the number of torps from 10 to 8, and then we're gonna put two anti ship crews. Uh, tomahawks. When that's done, uh, that's it. And you just click here, all hands map battleship battle stations, and you will be uh, put into the game. On sonar, new contact bearing zero 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 designated Sierra one. Okay guys, so here we are. Con sonar new contact bearing zero five one designated Sierra three. So let me go through here and explain uh, what's going on. First of all, the visuals. So when you right click on your mouse, you can rotate the camera. And as you can see, we're in the middle of nowhere in the ocean. And we can't see anybody because um, we've not identified those targets yet. Um, and then if you if you go under you can see you can rotate under and see the sub from various angles if you use a scroll wheel you can uh, change the zoom so there we are and you can scroll in and you can zoom all the way in so that's that's how that works pretty simple and straightforward uh, if you click here on the right uh, this is basically uh, showing you it's like a little uh, reference book or reference uh, so you can look at the name of the sub and then it'll tell you basic things like does it have passive this one has passive radar um, so passive sonar it's got radar doesn't have a um, what do you call that uh, tow array con sonar Sierra one is classified as merchant okay so they've classified one of the uh, one of the ships and here you can see that it doesn't have anything but uh, yeah you can see what uh, type of weapons they have and everything like that you just click on this this up here is your uh, your your heading of, of the camera I guess so right here we're looking at the 
Zero. Con sonar, Sierra 2 is classified as merchant. Okay. So we're at zero, uh, zero bearing, so that's looking straight north. Um, here on the left, we've got this little box here, which is our mini map. Con sonar, Sierra 3 is classified as merchant. So if you uh, leave it long enough, the sonar operator is going to identify the uh, contacts for you. But if not, uh, I can show you how that's going to... Yeah, if you do it, want to do it faster, you do that manually, and I'll show you how. But here, so with your left mouse button, you can scroll the mini-map. With your zoom, you can zoom in and out. And here you can see this is us, and if you click any of these, um, the camera will go to them. So here we have this merchant ship. Click here on the other one. That's the other merchant ship and the third one and you can see like one here one here right and then let's click back on us you can also do that by pressing F1 goes to your submarine F2 goes to your target F3 goes to your weapon which we don't have right now and F4 I can't remember so so that's there uh, then here we've got the three sets of information. The one on the left is your ship, the one on the middle is your target, and the one on the right is your weapon. And you have things like course, speed, depth, uh, rudder, uh, angle, plane angle. Plane is the vertical, rudder is left and right, and ballast, BAL is ballast. Um, and that's basically the way that, that uh, if you guys ever been scuba diving uh, or in a pool and you take a deep breath, what happens? You fill your lungs with air, so air is lighter than water, so you you basically start floating up, right? Because you have more air in, in you. Whereas if you exhale, the air goes out, and uh, so the then you start sinking. So I think the way it works with subs is they use compressed air, and uh, they change the amount of um, either air or water that's in there uh, that's like part of my ignorance on this I don't know if it's actually water that they uh, move around the ballast or if it's actually air and I'm thinking it's air but I can check that and confirm for you guys uh, so here let's look at this guy who's really really close to us uh, we can probably start seeing him So we got one, two, I don't know where the third guy is. So let's see here, it says bearing three, four, five. So three, four, five is right here. So we can't see him for some reason, but uh, we will. So this guy is extremely close to us. This, uh, so that's the bearing to the target. They're doing 12 knots. They're 2.9 or 2,900 yards, there's a kilo yards. And there's a 62% uh, solution because they're so close and our sonar has been picking them up that uh, we're very likely to hit them. So before we do that, uh, you can press zero up scope. and it makes your scope go up. You can see right here. And the scope gives you uh, visual data on the target. So while we couldn't uh, at first see this guy, and you press P and you can see at this heading 330 and you scroll with the scroll wheel you can see we can see them through our scope here if you press I it marks them uh, through your scope and then now it's been classified as M2 or Master 2 which is a much more accurate uh, position of the enemy compared to S which is for sonar and they use Sierras for that I think so now we can see we're at a 95% solution because we've seen the target We've been tracking on sonar, and so we have a pretty good idea where they are. Uh, the other mast is the if you press nine. Raise the ESM mast. The ESM is to detect electronic signals from other ships. It's a kind of a passive thing, and you detect like radar. For example, if they had radar, you could detect uh, radar signals or communication signals. And the third mast is our radar. Raise the radar mast. And that's this little guy here. And the radar is going to uh, well, do what radar do, does and point the location of whatever they can detect. 
So let's uh, lower the radar mast. So now we only have our periscope, we're still up. So <coughs> let's go ahead and shoot at this guy. Uh, so let me look at these, let me show you through these. Oh, let's finish up with the tabs here. So the f this tab here on the top is uh, your mast. So it's instead of pressing 0, 9, and 8, you can use these buttons for the mast. This is to activate your active sonar. Uh, which sends out a ping, but it lets you people know where you are. And then this is for your decoys, which is a noise maker, so you can deploy it. Right here, we've got depth. You can set the depth, and uh, the guy, the helm is gonna try to match, match that depth. And dive orders is periscope depth and emergency deep, which dives the boat really, uh, the bo boat really quickly. Blow ballast is basically you blow all the uh, compressed air to basically do an emergency uh, surfacing. Uh, once you're in the surface though, you will have to recharge your air, I'll show you that. Last thing here is helm, uh, you can set your speed, uh, you can set the different status of speeds, so one would be like 5 knots, two would be 10 knots, and things like that, B is probably backwards. Uh, silent running. Um, if you press this, it'll go to five knots, and you can't repair, and you can't repair floods and run pumps or anything. Uh, but you're gonna be really uh, silent. And then here is course. You can press this, or you can press H. And then what that's gonna do is, it's if you right click, it's gonna come right to zero one seven helm I. So it's just telling you, you know, you can see here the. Uh, rudder has shifted, but we're not moving, so it's not going to do anything. So that's that. Uh, here on the bottom right, we have the uh, weapons. So we've got four tubes in the sub. They're all loaded, two with uh, torpedoes, two with uh, harpoons. This one right here is the type of sensor. Right now it's on passive, and if I click on it... Well, it's not allowing me. But usually when you click on it, it can turn into um, active active sonar mode. Uh, weapon search is the type of search that it does. So you can say this does like a zigzag search and this means go shallow, go deep or go in a medium depth. So since all of these are surface targets we're gonna say go shallow and that's fine. Uh, right here we have the ambient noise, we've got the um, so in this case we're tracking this guy which is master 2 master 2 right here is a Andizan merchant ship and uh, it's at the surface so you can see it's here we're right here below the surface and uh, what we what happen one of the things you gotta know in this game is uh, there is a thermal layer which means the temperature changes significantly below this level and um, basically if you go under this layer anything above it is hard to detect and they can't detect you as easily and uh, same as the opposite and uh, if you're on the same side of the layer then it's easier to detect and um, targets in the same layer same side of the layer and that includes also like torpedoes same thing with torpedoes right uh, signature. So this is the signature uh, of this uh, ship and uh, usually what you have to do is if you for example change it it will try it's basically each ship has its own signature and all you have to do is match it And um, <coughs> and is in. So let's go. Okay, so that's where it was. So this is uh, right here. Own ship. This is. I'm probably gonna get this into. I don't wanna get into too much detail, but basically. These, this is how strong the signal of the enemy ship is compared to on your sensors. 
this means they're extremely strong um, because we're literally sitting still and we're very you know we don't we're not making any noise they're very close they're very noisy so it's very easy to hear them in fact you can hear it in the background a little bit uh, and this is zero is the toad uh, sonar which is um, a sonar that's towed f further away from back into the uh, submarine and it's uh, and it usually uh, it can detect sounds that the ones that the sonar on board your submarine cannot detect and active is uh, since we don't have any warships we can actually do that uh, let's try an active ping a ping is just sends a very loud sound that bounces off any objects that it finds and it comes back to you and it uh, and it tells you the position, but anybody who hears that ping will also be able to find you. So let's do that right now. Con sonar switching to active search. There you go. That sound. That's an active sonar ping. Uh, what else? So weapons. We talked about damage control. It's pretty simple. All you have to do is you click on any of these, and it goes and you focus your damage control on that area of the ship. Pretty simple. Uh, as you can see from this game, one of the things is it is hard to game. It is quite uh, realistic in many ways, but it's also a good. Um, the reason I kind of like it so far is because it's a good mix of simulation and, and entertainment. Because it's it's uh, quite. I want to. I don't want to use the word arcadey, but you know, you can control the sub manually, and uh, you know, you, you can see things underwater pretty easily. Um, so it's a good balance between those things. So anyways, enough chit-chatting. Let's get to it here. Where is that contact? So this contact here is that he is now at 6,500 yards. So what we're going to do is we're going to select one of these torpedo tubes. We're going to press spacebar and you're going to get this blue line. And the square is where uh, the torpedo will start to activate and then uh, as soon as it activ activates it will start seeking anything in its cone so if you do it like if I do this it's gonna go right past the target and it's never gonna detect it because it won't be active if I do this it's gonna activate right away and then it's gonna start seeking it if it's in within its cone so and then if you right click it's just gonna shoot it so before we do that let's get a good view here um, Right here, this is a pretty good view. So tube one, and we've selected. So let's press H, right here, and launch. Like right click. So here's our torpedo setting away. There's the ship right there. So again, F1 is your own ship, so you can see our torpedo is going away there. F2 is the target, and F3 is the torpedo. So you can see here in the mini map, which by pressing tab you can maximize. So this is us, this is the enemy, this is where the torpedo is going to activate. And um, that's the torpedo number, which is number one. When it gets here, uh, it will activate. When it, once it activates, and this little dotted line here is, um, you can see here there's a symbol of a submarine and a wire connecting to the um, torpedo. And that wire basically allows you to control the torpedo once it goes active. And uh, you can press in the, nu in the number pad the four, six, uh, and eight, and five keys, and you can actually steer the torpedo. But if you're going too fast, or if you're not facing the direction of the target, uh, essentially you're not going to be able to do that. So here we are, we're almost there. You can see as it gets close to this... Con, fire control, weapon acquired. There you go, there's the cone. It's red because it acquired, it's within the cone. And if I go right, left, or down, you can see I can steer the torpedo. But right now it's locked on, and I'm just gonna let it do its thing. Right here, 
And con sonar oh. lost contact. Master two. Last bearing three, four, seven. Contact breaking up. That's it. And now uh, we made this big hole on the ship. And now it's gonna start to sink. Your sub somewhere. Let's go back here to our sub. You can see in the distance that's our periscope right here, and there's the ship in the distance. And you can see the bottom of the ship right there as it's sinking. Now that that's done, that's how torpedoes work. Pretty simple, pretty straightforward. Uh, the basic concept of it, at least. Uh, let's go P and look at our periscope. Let's click on Master 1 right now, which is a bearing 006, which is right about here. You can see it in the distance there. Let's zoom in. Press I. And the other one is a bearing 22. And you can see it right there. Press I. Contact reestablished. Okay, so now we can see the other two ships. So now what we're gonna do is we have the harpoon. So we're gonna click here, and then all you have to do is press space, and uh, there is a minimum firing distance. So let's press tab. So you can see it's red here. So up to seven point uh, under eight thousand yards, you can't launch a, a harpoon. And above what is that? One hundred twenty thousand yards. That's the maximum range. So it's got to be within that range. So what we're gonna do again is uh, make sure we can watch this because it looks super cool. We're gonna watch it from this angle, and then we're gonna play space. Actually, no, no we're, we want to watch it. Yeah, this angle right here. There we go. Alright, so let's press space. Same thing. Um, basically, the, the square box is where the uh, cruise missile activates, and it's going to, as soon as it activates, it's going to try to look for a target, and if it can't find it immediately, it's going to auto destruct and. So we're just going to go here and shoot uh, at a place where we think that the cone is going to engage. Let's go. Right click. There it goes. There's our sir. That's where our sub's location is. And there's our missile. And it's heading uh, for the M1 contact, Master 1. You can see the other ship right there. And the one that we're our target is coming up really fast. Uh, these things do about 470 knots. They're subsonic. And they're the standard anti-ship weapon in the US Navy, or have been for a while. So there it goes. Skimming the surface. You can see it right here. Here it comes, and boom. Con sonar lost contact. Master one, last bearing zero zero six. Contact breaking up. And this one's sinking quite fast. It's gonna fire on it. Let's see where it uh, damaged it. Damaged it right here. Big hole. Our sub, we might even be able to see it in the distance. Yep, you see that smoke right there? If 
you go to the periscope, you can see it way in the distance there, all this smoke coming out of it as the ship goes down. And on the on the little um, mini map or mini radar, you can see the black ones are the ones that have been destroyed, and uh, this this guy here is still uh, alive. This one is actually a warship. Uh, it's a Dawn class, so let's go here, click uh, on this thing, and switch over to until we find Dawn. See what it is. There you go, Dawn. So Dawn, the only thing Dawn has is radar, which can detect us, and we are definitely detected right now. Actually, we're not because we're on submerged, but it could detect our mast possibly. It's extremely noisy, and it's got P-39 guns. So, it's got, you know, these whatever, 5-inch guns probably. To about to in the stern. Look at this, uh, these crew members you can see here, standing there. That's how much detail there is in this ship. There's crew members right here in the uh, AA turrets. But this ship basically can't do anything as m to us. Except detect us on if we surface. So, let's uh, let's do our thing. Select another uh, missile. And uh, let's finish her off. Oh, Can't get over that. It's so cool. It's one of the coolest things is having missiles come out of the middle of the ocean like that. Oh, if you press 9, it accelerates time. And if you press it again, it slows it down. And there you go. See how that it changed course right, up, right away? It uh, detected the target. Con sonar lost contact. Master you see the shockwave? Last bearing zero. You literally one, see the shockwave of this breaking up. Great, great, great. Right down the middle here. Big hole down the middle. Down she goes. Let's go back to our wonderful summary. So let's um, slow our periscope by pressing through. Down scope. Perfect. Now, just a little bit on how to control your ship. So, uh, you control your ship with ASW, uh, QE, and C. An X. <laughs> Basically, all the keys on the left side of your keyboard. So if you press A, uh, watch watch these numbers here, like where my cursor is. So you're gonna pay, have to pay attention to these things. So rudder is at zero, the planes are at zero, and the ballast is at zero. So I'll show you what that looks like. So let's go to right five degrees. Right. Uh, another 10 degrees, 15, 20, 25, 30. So this is maximum right rudder right here. That's how it looks like and the boat turns right. Uh, if you keep holding it, it will do it as well. So now we're going minus 30 to the other side. And then there you go. And zero is back to the center. Same, that was at A and D. If I press W, it's gonna bring the planes down to minus 30 and the sub is gonna go downwards. If I press S, it's gonna go to plus 30, and the sub is gonna go upwards. And again, I can do this with increments. And we're back at zero. If you do both, and then if you press X, it zeroes it back to zero, zero, zero. Now, uh, the last thing as far as speed is Q and Z. So Q. Make turns for five knots, maneuvering eye. Yeah, you can press here, and that's five. 
Or you can press on this one. Two is ten. Console three, are. We are 15, cavitating. Four, five, right? Make make turns for con sonar. No longer cavitating. And uh, you can do the same thing with Z. So Z. Back emergency. Maneuvering eye. So Z. Now I'm going backwards. Con maneuvering. Making turns for five knots. Okay. Now I press Q. Make, and we're going back forward. Making turns for five knots. Maneuvering eye. One important thing, uh, one concept that you need to be aware of is, let's say we're going at five knots, and you can see there's no bubbles generated here. Um, Con maneuvering, making turns for five knots. Thank you. Now let's say we go to ten knots. What, look what happens. Turns. Con sonar, we are cavitating. So sonar is telling you that we're cavitating. What does that mean? You see all these bubbles here. Con maneuvering, making turns for one. Zero knots. So we're under the water, but we're creating all these bubbles. So these are air bubbles, because what happens is the the you we're increasing the speed of the water so much around these propellers that the pressure is going down. And uh, if you guys remember your physics, as pressure goes down, uh, your the the boiling point of your uh, the water, the medium, goes down as well. So, what's happening essentially? It's uh, the uh, the water is creating these bubbles, right? And the bubbles go and explode, and they pop, and they make this sound. So that's called cavitation. Uh, and if you go deeper, the water pressure is higher, so you can actually go faster and not have to worry about it. Where, but as you go higher, uh, you have to worry about it. And apparently there's a formula that's uh, your speed in knots times 20 minus 100, which will tell you what is the depth at which you will start cavitating. So for example, uh, 10 knots times 20, that's 200, minus 100, means 100. So we need to be uh, below 100 feet to not cavitate. Anything above 100 feet at this level, it will cavitate. 5 knots, that's 5 um, times 20, so 100 minus 100, so anything with five knots, we're good, basically. All right, so now that we do that, let's go full ahead's flank. Make turns for two, five knots. So now we're going, eye. we're going under the water at maximum speed. Now, the other last thing that uh, we're going to look at is ballast, which is zero. So that you control that with E and C, and what that does is changes the amount of air and water uh, in your ballast. Um, I think it's just air. Again, I have to check that. And um, what that what that does that what that does is if you guys have ever scuba dived, as I said, swam, and the whole analogy with breathing in and breathing out is, uh, let's say we breathe out, right? So that's the equivalent of pressing C here. You see, minus five. Uh, actually, let's slow down just to demonstrate better. Make turns for con sonar. No longer cavitating. Do you see how we uh, we're now at 52 new feet? This is actually the best way to describe this. So if we press X again, sorry, if we press C, minus five balance, ballast, uh, we're gonna start sinking. So we're at 54, 55, 56, and if we press it, we can go um, all the way down to minus 30, which is gonna make that go a lot faster. 63, say we're we're reducing in depth without moving at all. So it's just up and down. So we're not moving our planes, we're not doing anything, we're just sinking right now. Why are we sinking? Is passing one hundred feet. Uh because we don't have enough air. Uh we've like let go of the of the of the air. It's like deflating your scuba gear or letting go of your air in your lungs. Same concept. Now if you press E all the way up, back to 30, again there's 5 increments, it's going to start doing the opposite. We're 184 feet already. And now... Now we're putting air back into the tanks, I believe. That's what's happening here. And we're starting to race. As you can see we're doing it pretty quickly. 
Let me uh, press F9 to speed this up. Passing 100 feet. So we're at the... And we're going to do this all the way to the surface. There you go. And now we're breaking the surface of the water. Just without touching anything, the, the sub is just raising itself. And there it is. We are surfaced now. If I press X again, uh, it's gonna neutralize the everything again. We're gonna probably lose a little bit. We're at what, 12 feet right now? And there you go, guys. That's how you surface without. Now the other thing you can do now that this is neutral is like let's say we speed it up. Make turns for two con sonar. We are cavitating. So that's one way to go up and down, right? So now we're gonna speed up to full speed ahead. And now uh, a little piece of uh, interesting fact here. Modern submarines are slower on the surface and faster sub below the surface. In World War II designed submarines were faster on the surface and slower down in the water because of their hydrodynamic shape. Another thing you can notice is on the sonar, all of this is noise. You're not going to be able to pick up anything. It's like since we have all this ambient noise, right? Like if we go here, you're not going to be hearing anything. Like. Uh, it's like trying to hear somebody else talk in a rock concert, right? I can't be able to hear very much. But if you're like in the you know, middle of uh, nowhere with no sound, you're going to be able to hear everything, right? Same concept. All right, now that we are moving, uh, you can see the uh, the forward planes here. Uh, like if I do this, it's not going to... It's it's going as air and you know but the the rare ones are working so the rare ones are now trying to get the nose of the uh, sub up right now so the rare one if we go down see right there it's pushing the sub down and that's enough to make it submerge there it goes con maneuvering making turns for two Five knots. And we're under the water. We are now at 100 feet. Passing 100 feet. And that's how you can do it as well. So you don't. Ha you can use uh, either ballast or ballast. Passing 100 feet. Or rudder or both, right? And that's how you control your sub guys. Now we're gonna try to surface again. Even out by pressing X, and we're all back on the surface. And it's as easy as that, guys. That's how you drive a submarine. You can do go left, left full rudder. Submarine goes left, right, right full rudder. Submarine turns that way. Up, go. This is how the scopes, that's our periscope. Raise the ESM mast. Nine is the ESM mast, and eight Raise the radar is mast. the radar. Lower the ESM mast. Lower the radar mast. And that's it, guys. Let's do a dive. And let's press C to get our ballast down as well. So we're going to do a really f quick dive. Watch how quickly. Passing 100 feet. How quickly we're gonna dive here. I think the test depth for uh, this type of ship is around 900, 200 feet, thousand feet or something like that. So we're gonna hit the Passing 900. Passing 300 feet. feet. 
passing 400 Con sonar, no longer cavitating. That's it, see? Passing We're deep 500 enough. feet. Passing 600 feet. Passing 700 feet. Passing 800 feet. Passing 900 feet. Yeah, here we are. We are at 900 feet, gentlemen. Passing 900 feet. And ladies. And this is how the world looks up, looks from 900 feet below the water, guys. Kind of beautiful, actually. We're still doing full speed at 25 knots. Modern, uh, modern subs uh, do much faster than that in the 30s. Now what we're gonna do is try an, uh, an emergency ascent, and uh, we're gonna go here, and. Uh, Blow ballast, shift R. So you can either click this, or left click this, or press shift R. Uh, so we do full speed ahead. Sorry. We're already at flying speed. And uh, essentially, when you blow the ballast, uh, you know how 30 is the maximum? It's going to go to 60. It's basically going to take all the air in the sub and uh, push it into the ballast tanks. And what that's going to do is just cause this thing to rocket out of the water. And at the same time, I'm going to press S, go all the way up to 30, plane up, and this thing is going to rocket. So let's press, let's do that right now. Shift R. Emergency surface the ship, die by. And there is that. That's probably water. i assuming that this just, as I said, water that's in the Passing tank. Passing 800 feet. Passing 700 Look feet. how quickly our, our depth is changing here. Passing 600 feet. Passing 500 feet. Passing 4... Con sonar, we are cavitating. Passing 300 feet. Passing 200 feet. And here we come out of the surface. Passing 100 feet. Boom. And we're in the surface. That's an emergency ascent, guys. Now you can you have to wait for this number to go back to zero, and uh, the uh, compressor is gonna try to charge up the air, and then you can start using your ballast again. Uh, one good way to demonstrate the, the ballast concept again, if we try to go down now, it's gonna be extremely tough. It's not gonna the sub's not gonna want to dive. You can see how silly that looks. It's like we're trying to push, but the sub is just full of air, like a balloon, and it just, I mean, it, we're fighting it right now. Passing 100 feet. We were able to do it, but it was kind of tough. Alright guys, oh, hey. and here's like a fast turn uh, to the left, and that's it guys, that's the maneuvering of us up in this game, and how to shoot, and how to track. Passing 200 feet, con knuckle formed. We're gonna try something for fun. Just to end the video here. Actually let's let's go to the surface and get this air charged up first. Passing two hundred feet. Before we do that. Passing one hundred feet. Okay. Actually we can do it from here too. What we're going to do, guys, is uh, take this torpedo. And we're 
gonna show you what happens when you have an act you shoot a torpedo too close so we're gonna press take this torpedo and shoot it right in front of us and it's gonna activate as soon look, look at this about uh, 800 yards ahead of us let's do a thousand yards uh, right here, 500 yards. There it goes. Aye, sir. And the torpedo goes active right away. And it starts seeking in a cone in front of the ship. Now, if this, we're so close and we're making so much noise. This, that this thing could easily acquire us if we get into its cone. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna steer it. High pressure airbags charge complete, ready to dive. Let's see. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna steer it a bit further away. So you see how we can steer? We can go down and up. What we're gonna do? There's our sub. Now watch, watch the mini map here. As soon, if if the torpedo seeks for any reason and does like it's doing circles, like as soon as torpedo is doing circles, as soon as it goes back, it might acquire us. why it's not hmm, interesting maybe it's because it's still under wire I don't know but what we're gonna do is we're gonna activate the torpedo or we're gonna break the wire shift F4 is that not working either? Okay, there you go. Now we turn it into active mode. Let's see if in the when we activate the sonar, if it's going to be able to detect this. That is impressive that you're not able to see it. like these torpedoes. Anyways, we're gonna steer it right back into us. And uh, it's gonna be... And we're gonna end it right there, guys. And there's a big hole. I wonder... That's it. I think we sunk ourselves successfully. Alright guys, I uh, hope you enjoyed that. Um, next time we'll do a couple missions and uh, fight against some real enemies. With uh, And uh, guys, I'll show you some uh, torpedo evasion, which is the most stressful thing in this game. And as I said, I haven't played this very much, but uh, it seems like a great game and uh, hopefully we'll, we'll do a couple missions and see how we like this game. Thanks for watching, and uh, have a good one.